bike, the weather is appropriate. I'm on my way to check on our new plot to see if it's ready to get in there and start ripping up the ground. And I'm also on a little bit of a mission to find some landscape fabrics for the salad beds that the boys are planting back at the homestead. So I'm gonna bounce around a little bit, check on things, and I'll take you around with me. Looking good here. It's nice to see my shade from this building has been reduced. So the plan is to put a couple caterpillar tunnels up here if we have the materials for them. I don't. Since we've had some odd shaped ones, and because of the way I was making those tunnels, we've been using more materials than I thought we would. So we're gonna have to. Uh, we might have to improvise a bit to get two in. We'll definitely get one in here. And look at this. This is craziness. This is what invasive grass does and why it requires a lot of time, but it's especially heat that it requires. So we covered this in the fall and that's the one challenge when you cover in the fall is you're not getting the heat units to like bake out the grass. So it's still there. I mean, it's kind of yellow. It's not, it's, it's, and it's kind of growing and that's because the rhizomes of the grass has so much energy stored in it. So I'm thinking what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, just rip it anyways, and just get the process started. Break up those crowns of rhizomes. And I'm gonna come in here with the rotary plow and try this a little differently than we've done it in the past. So I'm gonna rotary plow it, which gets it really deep. And uh, then we'll tarp it again and we'll kind of begin this process starting very soon, but not today. Checking in on our flagship plot here. And uh, rye is doing great. I'm thinking, two weeks I'll probably turn that in. Flail mow it and turn it in. I'm gonna borrow Jordan Mars flail mower because I don't have one. He's got one. He's happy to lend it to me. I'm gonna use that to flail mow it and then roto-till that stuff back in. So I'm here to look for fabrics that have holes in them and so far I don't see any. I thought I saw some there before but yeah this is coming up good. It's like three inches tall now Got a couple more inches on there and it'll be good to turn in. These greenhouses are coming along very nicely. Really good germination. I'd say almost 100% germination in here. And that's because we put the irrigation in early and we just got these beds really, really soaked. We're almost ready for a second cut on this spinach. I'd say in fact, we're pretty much ready for a second cut now. And uh, hey, check it out. Found a fabric. One. <laughs> So I've just left these greenhouses open because it's, it's sunny today and it's hot in there. So keep these doors closed. Roger will be by, because he lives right by this plot. He'll be by to close these up before the evening. Oh, and I just realized, I just found, oh, four or five more fabrics, perfect. These fabrics are great because you can use them for years to come. I imagine I'll get maybe 10 years out of these puppies. I'm gonna take these back to the home base, then I'm going to slide over to one of the other high rotation plots and open those caterpillar tunnels because it's probably cooking in there. Arriving here at one of our high rotation plots, I'm gonna open up these tunnels because it is probably just piping hot in there. And that's actually okay. There's nothing planted in there right now except some of the overwintered spinach. But uh, it's good because I want to warm up the soil. But opening them up will just ventilate them and get the humidity out and the moisture because I want the soil to dry a little bit so that we can start working these beds. Sometimes my best 
best discoveries are just accidents that happen completely randomly. And look at this. This is an arugula crop. I showed this in a previous block, a little, uh, vlog a little while ago because it's starting to come back, but this arugula was under snow. Well, actually it was under lo low tunnels, but that has been caved in and was looked completely dead when we came in here at the beginning of the season. Now it's almost like 100% germination. It's like it's just, it's just come back from the stock. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. But it tastes amazing. Probably harvest this in like 10 days to two weeks. This is, <laughs> this is incredible. Just thick arugula, arugula crop, just fantastic. So these tunnels are doing really well. The soil's drying out really well. We will be back in here. As soon as that Salanova is done at the home base, we're gonna be coming here to prep these beds. So this is exciting. I've got two beds of arugula that are gonna be ahead of the, the ones that I seeded in the greenhouses. Just fantastic. All right, these guys are just crushing the Salanova in the tunnel. So we're gonna have, this tunnel will be for sure finished by the end of the day. And then we've got one bed in this one, and then we're gonna be planting more in the front yard tunnel as well. And that means that we're gonna have to start some more from seed in the nursery next. But I'm gonna spend the rest of my day putting roll-up sides on this greenhouse. So I already have the roll-up sides from the last one stayed here, there's a handle on them and everything, but I need to make them four feet longer, which shouldn't be an issue because I've got lots of scrap metal around, tech screws and a grinder.